After getting almost lost in the GPU market, AMD has made several preparations to make a comeback. Now, even though these preparations might not make it the best GPU manufacturer, some of these are crucial for its GPU catalog development. About two months ago, we got the first slide showing that AMD is going to develop a brand new graphics architecture called the Navi 3.5. AMD's original plan is to launch it with the Ryzen 8000 APUs in 2024. And even though AMD hasn't met the milestone of bringing Navi 3 architecture to desktop Ryzen 7000 CPUs, it has already started preparations for the 8000 series. As reported by Foronix, AMD is already working to establish support for Ryzen 8000 APUs on the Linux operating system. Foronix is a well-known publication for its timely reporting on the latest developments in the Linux operating systems and has been one of the best sources of showing the improvements in the latest hardware. According to the website, AMD is registering Navi 3.5 as GFX 11.5, which was already hinted from a month-old leak where the GFX 1150 and 1151 made appearance on open source codes. According to reports, these are the 12 and 16 core APUs from Strixpoint and Strix Halo families. Now the latest edition of GFX 11.5 on the free desktop source code, it is now evident that AMD is making modifications so that RDNA 3.5 which shares characteristics of both RDNA 3 and RDNA 4 architectures can now be fully supported on the Linux operating systems. As video card says, the implementation is already ahead of its schedule and is likely to be included with the Linux kernel version 6.7 which is isn't that far from now. So even though Ryzen 8000 APUs aren't going to be launched before the next year, it is expected that AMD might unveil them in early 2024. So despite the rumors that AMD is not going to launch high-end RDNA 4 GPUs, we still have something pretty interesting for budget gamers who would want to skip a discrete GPU and it's most likely that Ryzen 8000 APUs will be perfectly able to play most games at 1080p high to ultra settings. As for the discrete GPUs, even though the popular opinion currently denies their entry into the next-gen RDNA 4 lineup, it still doesn't mean that they are entirely cancelled. What I mean by this is that it is possible that these GPUs are postponed because of a few problems. According to some recent reports, it is not currently feasible for AMD to produce such high-end cards based on their new die design. If you remember from one of the recent videos from Moore's Law is Dead, Tom talked about a leaked diagram of how the next-gen GPUs will be designed based on the Navi 4C architecture. Initially, AMD was planning to launch four GPUs based on the Navi 41 and 42 dies and these dies supposedly feature a multi-chiplet design with somewhere between 13 to 20 chiplets. Unlike the Navi 31 die, it is almost 3 to 4 times more chiplets on a single die. Now even though we have a few diagrams from the leaker Everest of how they would look like, another Twitter user called Creeper9000 made a full render of these chips. It can be clearly seen that the die is divided into 3 zones where each zone features 3 shader engine dies on each active interposer die. Each of them is having their own infinity cache and GDDR memory control. Moreover, it also has a dedicated I.O. die which is connected to every AID and apparently the design will also incorporate die stacking. So definitely a big improvement in the die design but as of now, it is unclear to why exactly it is not possible for AMD to include such a design in the next gen lineup because at least the die stacking is already being used in data center dedicated MI300 GPUs. Whatever the case is, we have to wait for AMD's official announcement regarding these rumors but we can clearly see that AMD still has a chance to make a come back if it wants to. However, with what Nvidia is doing currently, it is unlikely that AMD can do similar. Even though Nvidia arrogantly sits with its highest GPU share in the discrete GPU market, it's not just because of luck but because of company strategies. Not only it is doing well despite launching poor GPUs in the ADA family, but it is also doing way too well with its AI dedicated GPUs. In a recent tweet by Baron senior writer Ty Kim, he quotes the financial consulting firm Raymond James saying that it takes only $3,320 to make a single H100 GPU, which is then sold for $25,000 to $30,000. The manufacturing cost estimates might not be very accurate, but even if it is the pure manufacturing cost, Nvidia is still benefiting over 1000% on eGPU considering that we have seen reports where Nvidia has sold the H100 GPU for up to $70,000. So you can just calculate Nvidia's profit if it reaches its aim of shipping more than half a million H100 GPUs this year only. Not to mention Nvidia can hit $300 billion in revenue from AI alone by 2027. So if Nvidia wants, it can easily produce the fastest yet the cheapest gaming GPUs for the next generations from the profit it earns from the AI segment. However, this might go against Jensen's ego because he likes to gain as much as profit as he could from every product and every situation. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below and whether AMD has any chance against Nvidia in the coming years. Lastly, hit the like button if you found the video informative and subscribe for more videos like this. Make sure to turn on the notifications to 
never miss any future videos and I will see you in the next one.